Hello everyone. In today's video, we're going to be recreating an OTT style effect using internal Bitwig devices. And the question you probably would have right away is, since OTT is a free plugin, when do you want to use the Bitwig device that you create versus when do you want to use the plugin? And my honest answer to that is most of the time you're probably going to want to use the plugin because you can dial in the sound you want to get within 30 to 40 seconds. When you build the device that we're going to build, the temptation is going to be there and there's nothing wrong with this, but the temptation will be for you to dive deep into the effect chain to try to really control your signal the way you want to control it. And that's not a bad thing. It's just, it's going to take you a lot longer. Okay. When we finished, we're hoping to just have like eight remote controls that we can work with, but it gets tricky because we can't really visualize things unless we go deeper into the device. But let's go ahead and get started. So OTT, I just found this out yesterday. It stands for over the top. I never knew what that acronym was. It's over the top compression. Okay. And it uses both downwards and upwards style compression. If you're not familiar with how that works, basically downwards compression is when it takes a hot signal, so something high on the amplitude scale, and it brings it down. And upward style compression is when something actually gets down low, it's bringing that volume up. And then essentially what you're doing is you're squashing it from both sides. And we can actually visualize that easily inside the spectrum analyzer, but let's start by listening to the sound we're gonna work with and just why I'm using it on this sound. It's mostly for educational reasons, but what we have here is information all the way across the frequency spectrum, and we have some degree of dynamic range. Okay, there's quiet parts, there's loud parts. And when we look at it, and I want to kind of bring up the meters here, let's see how hot it's coming in right now, because I am going to want to give myself a little bit of a buffer. Okay, so it's currently peaking out at 0.1 dB. That doesn't give me a lot of headroom. In fact, it gives me almost as little headroom as possible. And just as a gain staging thing, what I usually would do is the first thing I'd do is I'd come down and I'd just bring this down by six. So now I'll have six dB of headroom to work with. And the other benefit of doing that, depending on how you're working and how you're mixing, but a lot of times the first thing I'll do is I'll bring in this uh, VU meter and this is just how I have it come up because if I'm using analog inspired plugins, a lot of times they are calibrated to minus 18. And so if I'm hovering somewhere around here, that's kind of the level that the plugin wants. If you're way over, it's gonna be overdriving the plugin. If you're way under, you're not gonna be getting maybe any of that kind of analog saturation, but just kind of tickling on either side of this is usually good. Not always, it depends on the plugin, but for me, this is just the way I typically do things. So when I'm looking at it now, it's kind of right in that range that I like, okay? And if it wasn't in the range that I like, I'd usually need to do some kind of like peak limiting first, which is actually how we're going to start this entire process. But now that we've got that little gain staging out of the way, let's go ahead and let's bring in an instance of the OTT. And we'll turn it off to start. And what I want you to watch is when I turn this on, how this basically just gets leveled out, okay? So you see that, right? I turn it off. We see a little bit more of a curve, a little bit more of a line going down. I bring that in, that line essentially gets straightened out. And that's what the OTT is doing. It's a three band compressor that utilizes both upward and downward compression on each band. Now, right now it doesn't sound particularly good, but I'm gonna try to dial it in a little bit so it sounds better, but still does the same effect. So let's get rid of the spectrum analyzer. I don't want that to uh, impact my decision-making here. So we're just gonna turn these all off. I'm gonna start with the highs. And I kind of wanna see that ball, that's the peak ball, kind of going um, in and out of this black range. Okay, that should be all right, right there. And I'm seeing the value go both positive and negative. All right, that's kind of telling me that there's both upwards and downwards compression happening. Now we'll go to the mids. Okay. And now let's bring in our lows. And when I use the OTT, I typically don't touch anything else. Okay, let's see where it's peaking and we'll make any gain adjustments. It looks like we've added about five dB of gain here. 
So let's bring our output gain down. The highs are a little bit too high still, so we're gonna bring that down a little. Okay, I'm okay with that. Just gonna blitz it over time. Just make sure that we're not hearing too much of the effect. And when I mean hearing it, I mean like artifacts, like something that makes it sound really bad. Okay, let's see where we're peeking out at. Okay, we're peaking out at minus three, so I can just turn the output gain down by three. And now we shouldn't have any uh, obvious gain mismatch. Just make sure this is now around minus six. Okay, that's close enough for me. So now we'll turn the odd on and off. And you can hear what a drastic effect that has. And it's basically taking us into pop style music territory in terms of what we're doing to the spectrum. So now look at our high end compared to with that off. Okay, and of course you can go in here and you can change some of these effects. You can say how much upwards compression, how much downwards compression. You can play with the attack and release time a little bit, but typically if you are using the OTT, this is the way you do it. You just bring this thing in and then you kind of try to fine tune it until you get a nice sound that's working. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna recreate something like this in Bitwig and we're gonna see how the results come out. The beauty of the Bitwig one is just that if we want the crazy degree of control, we can have that. Okay, but again, I kind of want to go for speed. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring up a chain, and that's what's going to house this whole thing. Okay, and then I'm going to start, and this is just for safety, I'm going to start with a ladder filter. Okay, and this is just to make sure that like the speakers aren't working too, too hard, but I like using the ladder because potentially we could be getting a little bit of nice analog saturation here. So let's bring this in. And we're going to go high pass. And it's up to you what you want to use, how steep you want it to be. I'm going to go, let's go 18, okay? No resonance. And we're just going to bring this up to around 30. And if this is having any effect, I'm hoping it's just making it clearer. So getting rid of anything that's well below our audible range. I'm not going to do anything else with this filter. This is just where it's going to be. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a peak limiter. And this is then going to be one of those things where it's up to you whether or not you choose to use the peak limiter. But I don't want, when I start to add my upwards and downwards compressor, I don't want that being too impacted by the peaks. So if your signal is coming in and it's very peaky, I want to bring those down a little bit so I'm not asking the compressors to work too hard to deal with that. So I'm going to bring a peak limiter in. And let's right away go ahead and just create a new page here. And this is going to be the page that we are primarily using. And it's just going to be set to the ceiling here. And then I want to rename that. I'm just going to call it um, Peaks. OK, I'm sure there's a better name we could use. All right, and let's get out of here. And for this signal, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to get rid of some of those peaks, but I don't want to hear the effect. I'm going to turn the volume up in my headphones a little bit too. Okay, so we can hear it working. So we're going to try to speed up the release too fast and it's going to sound bad. Too slow when you're getting more than just your peak. Okay, so that's actually pretty good. Okay, I'm happy with that. And again, for you, if you were working with this, you'd probably have this all the way up by default and then just pull that back until it gets to a point where it sounds bad. So I'll show you the way I would do it. This is without me looking. So at this point, I'm starting to hear stuff, which I don't want. It's around 12. And now let's look at the peak limiter, see just how much it's doing. Okay. 
So that's good enough for me. We could probably go further with it if we wanted to. And again, we haven't brought up any gain. All we've actually done is brought some gain out. So if we were visualizing the signal, signal all we've done right now across all frequency bands is just bringing down some of those peaks a little bit. All right, now we'll get into the upwards and downwards compression. And we need to do that at three distinct bands. So we're gonna add in a multi-band, effects three. Okay, and now the cool thing is we do have control over the crossover, which is something you don't have control over in the OTT. And this is why you might actually use a device you've created because you can better isolate out the frequency spectrum you want. So I'm just gonna listen here and try to set this. I think in this case, that should be good for the lows. And you may want to set this as a remote control as your crossover. So I'm a little worried because we have a lot of settings that we have to be able to touch, but let's do that for now. And if we need to, we'll get rid of it. And we'll do that for the high. Okay. Low, X over. And yeah, let's call it low X. I know what that means, low cross, high cross. Okay, cool. And let's bring um, our mids in now. Let's get rid of the lows. Let's bring in our mids. Okay. And for me in this example, around 4K should be good. Yeah. Okay, cool. So this should have no impact yet. Okay, we've just crossed over the frequencies. Pretty cool. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add a dynamics device in each one of these. And I'm actually gonna try to start by setting them all exactly the same way. And then if I need to, I'll do some additional tweaks to it. Okay, so let's go into the low. Actually, let's start with the mid because that's where the most information is happening. And I might even get rid of these two guys when I'm working just to figure out what a good setting is. And we need a dynamics. Okay, and I, again, since we've now dealt with the peaks, I'm gonna have the detection model be RMS. All right, and let's get started here. So we're gonna use a three ratio, and I want a very, very soft knee. So that's almost always working. Okay, and that threshold should actually be pretty good. And then we're gonna do the same thing on the other side. What setting did we put there? 19-ish, we'll use the same thing. And what we wanna see happening, and this will depend on our thresholds, is we wanna see parts where the signal is being brought up and then other parts where the signal is being brought down. And again, we don't wanna to hear too much of a difference. And for me, that's pretty good. Let's add the same ratio here, let's add a three. It's gonna be kinda of crazy really bringing it up. So I might actually have that around 2.5. Cool. And now in theory, using these exact same settings on the highs and the lows, we should get kind of the same effect happening. So I'm just going to go ahead and control click that into the lows. Maybe that didn't, that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Hmm. It didn't actually put it in the lows, but that's fine. And then we'll control click and see if that put it up into the highs, which it did not. It moved it out here. So now I'll drag it into the highs. All good. No worries. And let's see what's happening in the low range now with these settings. Okay. And I haven't even touched attack and release. I'd probably make the attack be slightly faster. We'll put it around one millisecond, just in case some peak information's coming through. And I'm fine with that default release setting. That seems to be bouncing just fine. Okay. And now let's check it out in the highs. Okay, so this one we might have to set up a little bit differently mostly just bringing it up. There we go. So I'm getting a little bit of a bounce on each side. 
I think part of that too had to be with the attack being too fast. There we go, we get a little bit of a bounce on each side. Okay. So we're not hearing much of a difference, but that's okay because what we've probably now allowed ourselves to do is bring up our overall gain at the end. So let's see just how much we've actually compressed at this point. Okay, we're at minus 10. So that means that we can now bring this up by 4 dB roughly. off and on so you can hear how clean that is it's not as aggressive as the other one is and we could always make this a lot more aggressive if we were to have a ratio control that's always going to bring the ratios up on all of them and a similar thing with attack and release right we could have controls for attack and release but this would probably be the way i would do it let's go ahead and we're going to make it a little more aggressive and we're going to make it more aggressive just by using a knob so let's go in here and, oh, I'm actually gonna have to do it a little bit differently. I'm gonna have to create a macro first and then route that macro to um, one of these, uh, whatever they call this thing, remote controls. So let's go ahead and do that quickly. So I'm just gonna add in a macro. Okay. And now this is gonna be set to all of the ratios and it's always gonna be bringing the ratio up. So by default, we might put it at like one to two and the other thing we need to do is do this for threshold. So when we're moving a knob, the low threshold is coming up, the high threshold is coming down, and that's going to give us more of an aggressive compressing effect. So uh, this is going to take a little while. So I'll actually pause the video. But essentially what I'm going to do on each of these is I'm going to start them at one to two with the exception of what I did in the high end, which was a little bit different. And then I'm going to have those go up. Okay, so we're going to bring it from there, maximum up to about there. I'm not trying to be super strict with it. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've added in that ratio effect. And so let's listen to that as I bring it up. The higher this value, the more aggressive on either side. Okay, so there you go with ratio. And then the next thing we're gonna look at is going to be um, potentially setting it so that we could make the attack time faster. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's do that. And I'm gonna use the same effect like I did before where I'm gonna use a macro to kind of limit it, limit the range, and then I'll put that into our remote controls. So we'll use our macro. Okay, and we will set it up so that the attack speed could be all the way down. I think for the low and the mid, I don't want that. I'm going to start it around 0.2 milliseconds. The mid, I'm going to start around 0.2. But then for the high, at its fastest time, I will have that all the way down to 0.1. Okay, so then we'll determine how far up we're willing to let this go. Probably, we'll just set it up to like 1.5. I don't think we'd ever be going that fast uh, for the effect that we're going for here. Okay, so good. Same thing for mids, we'll go 1.5. That's just the range. Okay, that's close enough. Lows, same deal, 1.5. And you could do the same thing with release. I think with this sound, like I'm happy enough with the release, but we could do something like that. So we'll set up our remote control. That's gonna be attack time. When it's really low like this, we're expecting a little more compression to occur. Then it kind of stinks though, because I really would like to have a final control for low, mid, high, but if we want more aggressive compression, we could also be adjusting the threshold. So it's a little bit tricky. And let's again see how much we've squashed. A decent amount here. 
So let's just do the last thing with threshold. And then I might have to create one more remote control page that's just controlling the low, mid, and the high. Um, that's probably the way that I would set this up, to be honest with you. So we're going to just adjust our threshold next, and we're going to have it working so that when I pull on that knob, it's going to bring the threshold values up for the upwards compression and down for the downwards compression. So let's just start here by being a little bit smart and giving ourselves some room. So let's start this one at like minus 40. Okay. Yeah, may, maybe minus 35. We do want an audible effect. And the high threshold, we'll start that around minus 10. Okay. And now we're going to add one more macro here. And then the way this will work is that when I turn this knob, it's going to pull this one up by, we'll go to like 20 if we want to be really crazy and bring that down by 20. And again, this is extremely, extremely intense. And to be honest with you guys, the other thing I would probably add in on this page would be for the knee control, all right? If we wanna make that a sharper knee or a smoother knee, I don't think we're gonna do that in this example, but we could. Again, we could add more control if we wanted it. Um, for the mids, we're gonna do a similar thing. Just trying to go nice and quick here. And then for the highs, we're going to do a similar thing. The highs is the one where I'm actually kind of hitting it a little bit harder. Okay. And up by 20. Okay, so then we're going to go ahead and route that to threshold. Really, it's just like more more ought. That's really what this one is doing. Ought X, you know, ought to the extreme. And now let's see how far we're hitting it. We can start to, we can really hear the effect now. So we've even got ourselves a couple more levels of dB here. So if we brought up the final output gain, we could now bring it up by like seven almost. But you can hear it's the high end that's really jacking up. So I would have to go in here and kind of manually get this right. That's the one part I really don't like. Although that is kind of what the original sound sounds like, so I don't know. The last thing we would do is we would add one more page, okay? And with this page, we're really just gonna be controlling um, these values. And actually, there's a problem doing this, um, and that's that this is happening pre, pre these effects. So I actually don't wanna do that. What I want to do is I want to add one more multiband effects at the end of this chain, and that's going to be the one controlling those gain values. Okay, so you could do pre and post. So maybe we'll call this pre and the other one post. Let's do it that way. Okay, so we're going to call this pre-low. We're going to call this pre-mid. And then we're going to call this post-mid or no, sorry, <laughs> pre-high. And then we're gonna do the same thing just on the other side of it, okay? So we're gonna add in one more multiband. And we'd have to set this up, and again, I don't really feel like doing it all now, but we'd have to set this up so that the crossovers would be the same, especially if we added in control, which I think we did, didn't we? On our first page. Yeah, we have those controls, so we'd actually have to make those identical. Um, for now, I don't really feel like doing that. I'm just going to lock them in the same way, but we could do it. It's not a difficult process. So we need, come on, buddy, uh, 262. And I think it's intelligent enough where I can just type in 4K. Nope. We'll just move it up and make it roughly the same. Okay, cool. And then I just need to do the same thing on this side. 
And then we have our final gain control there. Okay. So this is post low, post mid, and post high. And there we have our effects. Okay. And then overall, and I think we're gaining too much. It's unfair. No. Nope. Just by a tiny bit. We want to make sure we're ending up around minus 0.6. And there you go. And now let's listen to the way the OTT does it. You're going to hear just how much more transparent my Bitwig version is. And now the Bitwig one. That one's really having the highs so much more prevalent. It's really something sounding almost more like this. So there you have it. That's my way of creating an OTT style effect inside of Bitwig Studio. Hopefully that's helpful for you guys. It gives you the inspiration if you wanna go in there and take these remote controls a little bit further uh, so that you could have it where, you know, it's automatically when you're changing those crossover points doing it on both the pre and post multiband effects so that when you're adjusting the gain, it's, it's like correct, so to speak. Um, but again, totally up to you and how you wanna work with this. Uh, definitely a powerful effect effect. Um, but it's one of those effects where it's like with great power comes great responsibility. Thanks for watching and take care.